We are blessed to have a special guest with us to share their testimony. But before you do that, just introduce yourself to us, Roy. Oh, hi there. My name is Roy. I pres- at current, currently go to South Street Church in Eastbourne, which is fantastic. Um, have been on and off going to church, I suppose, for quite a long time. But um, this is the first time really I felt completely comfortable and at, um, in the right place with God at a church. So that is really good. Um, um, spent many years sort of drifting about. At, the, at an early age, I lived in London from about the age of six till 18. Before that, I was, well, I was born in Ceylon and used to live in Norfolk with Dablin in the Air Force for a few years. So that's where, where I was there. But I spent most of my life in London to about 1980s, mid 80s. Then I moved to Eastbourne. Um, then, the, then the Sussex area for quite a long time. So that, that's where I've been most of my life. Um, Eastbourne and London, I should say. Well, you've done very well not to pick up any of the regional accents, Roy, haven't yeah. you? So, so tell us um, about life before you became a Christian. Before I became a Christian, I was just a typical young person. I used to like football, music, going to and art as well. I used to like painting and drawing. Always did that. And um, studied art at school. It was very productive for me, art, and helped me with my troubles. Because I had trouble with an illness called schizophrenia from a very, very young age, which caused me anxiety, worry, um, low self-esteem, all all those sorts of issues. Uh, And the art, the football, and the relaxation helped me, I suppose, in those years until I could get help. Yeah. But when did you first realise that you, you know, you were you were struggling with your mental health? What happened? Well, just before the age of fifteen, I had a week where I was very depressed for some reason. I didn't understand why. I, I wanted to die. Actually, I felt like I wanted to just um, finish it all. I felt like there were a certain amount of suicidal thoughts, I suppose you could say. Then, at the age of fifteen, I had set a serious breakdown, which put me in a mental hospital um, for many a long time. The doctors had written me off and said I'd never recover, but the people in my mother's church were praying for me, the Christians in the church, and I did make a full recovery. So the doctors couldn't understand why I'd made a recovery. The mother didn't really tell them much about that, but the reason was that the Lord Jesus Christ had intervened by his grace in my life and helped me through that situation and got me out of that situation. So that, in a sense, was healing. I know Christians often misplacedly talk about healing as a gift that that God gives, but God doesn't always choose to heal, but he did give me a great measure of healing, I believe, from this illness at that time to get me through that breakdown and situation. Yeah, God is sovereign over all, all things in Definitely. life, right? And Roy, I know I know when we were speaking earlier, you, you mentioned to me the um how the Lord used football. You were interested in football as a kid as well. And yeah. you're actually playing with it with a church is that, as well, right? So let's do something like that. Five side football team and also a table tennis team. I didn't mention table tennis, but I play table tennis as well. Very yeah. good. So he was very sporty. So, so, sporty. so when did you become a Christian? And what, tell us about what actually happened. Well, so at the age of 12 years old, I'd already been going to Christian Union for a year. I went to Ealing Grammar School at the age of 11. At the age of 12, I became a Christian. For, so for a year, I was at Christian Union hearing things about Jesus Christ and about prayer and about the Bible. And I was getting, well, the, the master said I was a Christian, but I don't think he was quite right because I hadn't actually committed my life to Jesus Christ at that point. And, but when at the age of 12, I got convicted of my sin at Christian Union camp I, under the preaching of the gospel. And I felt I needed to repent of my sin and turn my life over to Jesus Christ and start again, basically, which I did with the help of God and the Holy Spirit helped me, came into me. And um, now I'm living my life with Jesus. Yeah, incredible. How old are you now, Roy? 68. And you was a, a Christian, you said, when you be, when you become a Christian when you was 12. Yeah. So that's 56 years, isn't it? Yeah. Um, of being a Christian, how have you seen the Lord work during during that time? What's happened? Well, for some time, I had this mental trouble. Then I met Christians while I was at this um, hospital, and they encouraged me to go to a charismatic sort of church, which I did after some time. I got a certain amount of help from them, and it was a good time of life, actually. Well, I was introduced to biblical teaching up to a point, and about the Holy Spirit and things. I was able to encourage people, which I've believe is what the Lord called me to do and to help people as Christians and to share things with them about the Bible and about the Lord Jesus Christ, about salvation and the Holy Spirit. So that's what I did for those years. 
and I know theologically you've been in a journey. You mentioned that you was at a charismatic church to begin with over those um, over those years. What what's changed um, for you, Wayne, and also how have you seen the Lord work? Well, I felt the charismatic doctrine, at least part of it, was not as I would see the Bible teaching exactly as being correct. So I, I felt that was a bit leading me astray a bit in a way. So now I go to South Street, I feel the the teaching is exposit, what's called expository preaching we get in South Street, which is correct biblical foundational theology where the whole of the Bible, the whole counsel of God is taught without any slants to, to one particular aspect. The whole counsel of God is taught, which I think we all need as Christians. Yeah. In in knowing you, we, we speak regularly, uh, don't we, Wayne? I know there's been a couple of close shaves in your life where, you've, where you have nearly... Um, died. Um, tell yeah. us about both of those times. I had a motorcycle accident yeah, in mid twenties where I had a close shave with death. But the Lord got me through those situations, and and also Christians came to visit me while I was in hospital at one stage, and that was in, an encouragement. And, but the Lord was really with me, and it, both situations could have been far more serious. But the Lord's hand has been upon me all these years, I believe, and and delivered me from that situation. Yeah. As you've grown as a Christian over the years, Roy, I know you've um, developed and been equipped with different gifts. You're, you're, for those that know and love you, you're, you're seen as a, as a huge encourager and, you, and many people are blessed by your ministry of encouragement. And I know that you you bless people with your prayer as well. Tell, tell us about how you've sort of grown into those gifts and, and, and how you've developed those or how the Lord has developed them rather. As I mentioned earlier, I think I started to encourage people as a charismatic, in the charismatic church in the first instance, so I think I was looking at the Bible one day and I noticed about encouragement and I felt the Lord kind of directing my path towards that kind of ministry. So I can really say that sounds a bit super spiritual, but it's not really. It's just how the Lord led me and um, and I felt um, helped in doing that too. So and I'm still doing it. I'm still, I think the Lord's developed the gift more these days in South Street, more so. And um since I met people like Dave Knight and Dave Batchelor, the pastor, Dave Knight, the evangelist, and Dougie Daniels, my friend in a different church, and different people like this, I feel the Lord helps me with this, this to, to do this particular thing in the church. Yeah, We know, um, and we speak often about the public face of Christianity being the prosperity gospel um, over where we live in England. Um, but actually, we we know that the Christian life isn't like that. Is it? It's not a, It's not a life full of wealth, health and, and, and prosperity. Mm. Often there are troubles and trials and, and I know you've had seasons of this in your own life. Um, Roy, how have you felt the Lord um, with you during during those times and how have you been encouraged um, during those times? Well, I've always had difficulties with, in my Christian life and for some time not walked closely with God. I th think sometimes there's a lot of poor teaching in some churches that some of the the, the, for example, the Methodist church I went to for many years, there was no teaching whatsoever in those churches, really. It was just completely, they could have preached about anything but virtually, but not the gospel. And I think that was part of the trouble I had. But I think the most important thing is to view the Bible um, in terms of looking in context when you read the Bible, reading everything in context. And when you study anything in the Bible, don't. Like was some Christians, Dave mentioned this, about cherry picking, where pick a verse and try to apply it to a situation. You can't really do that. You've got to read that verse in context. It yeah. may not, when you take it out of context, it, the, sometimes you take it directly out of context and try to apply it to something, the meaning is altered. So you've got to realise that there is a place for that scripture in the context where it is found. And I'm trying, with Dave, Dave Knight's help, he's, he had a very good... Um, teaching in on youtube about hermeneutics about reading the bible in context and i've been studying looking at that when i read the bible now i read before the chapters before and the chapters afterwards so and try to see where that where that scripture sits so i'm looking at something in particular i get a scripture i do this and so, so i don't misread that and get the wrong interpretation and that's greatly helped me now that i'm got my life back to what it better than it was before should we say i yeah. don't claim to be anything super spiritual because i'm yeah. not i'm just uh, a vessel but um the lord's greatly helped me i know especially in south street i must say dave knight especially in dave batcher's ministry and others as well tony thompson the elder and other people too there's so many lovely christians there that point you in the right direction and correct you at times and, and show you the right way yeah so how did you end up at south street free church Roy? through my friend Dougie Daniels, who used to go there 
some time ago and um, he encouraged me that it was a good church and, and I just felt I needed to go along and I did so and um, found it was good and um, I'm still going there now. So. Yeah. so if anyone's listening to your testimony right now, Roy, and if they're not actually a Christian themselves, what would you say to them? What I'd like to say to you is the greatest thing in my life is knowing Jesus Christ. And I recommend anybody, to anybody to seek the Lord and seek the Lord while he may be found. Because there is a day coming when we won't be able to seek God anymore because he will withdraw that opportunity. But while, the, while, the, while it is still day, it says in the Bible, seek the Lord and try to find Jesus Christ. Try to confess your sin to Christ and come into a relationship with him. This is the most important thing anyone can do is to try to follow Jesus Christ the best way they can and and to honour him and to live for him. This is the most important thing. Amen. Amen. Roy, thank you. Thank you for um, being a part of this church. Thank you for your prayers and for your encouragement. We, we love you and we love you being here with us at South Street. Lovely to be here. Thank you.